Hi, I'm Gary and welcome to Jargon Free Help. This week I just want to say a big thank you to the Apple Mac Users Group in Sydney, Australia. Apparently you showed some clips at one of your meetings and also you've put a link on your website. Thanks very much for that. You're probably aware that I'm a regular visitor to Sydney and hopefully I'll be able to drop by and meet up with you guys as well. And for anyone there or anyone who is just watching this podcast, if there's anything you want to know, please drop me a line on the website. Just go to the contact page and hopefully I'll be able to do that. And people are always asking me about things like the iPads. And as you know, I've got one of them. And just last week I was on the train and this kid, Jaden, 11 years old, was having a look and we were looking at some photos that I'd taken and stuff. He actually said to me, are you middle-aged? Well... You can imagine the carriage kind of erupted in laughter, but not quite middle-aged, but I guess I'm getting there and I don't really want to think about it too much. But not too old to not want to have one of these, the iPad. So what are some of the questions people have got about the iPad? Well, they want to know about the battery life, which is actually very good. I use it, as you can imagine, quite regularly. Emailing, internet, using some apps, things like that, looking at videos, photos, etc. And I sort of charge it up and maybe charge it up every other day. So it's actually got a very, very good battery life. I've even got the one with the 3G in it and using that even when I'm out and about, just fantastic. It really is very useful. It certainly lasts longer than my laptop does. The other question is, has it replaced my laptop? No, the laptop has got its place, but there are a lot of things I'm now doing on the iPad, the emailing, internets, and things like that. And it has been that on one weekend, I actually didn't switch on my laptop. And if you were to ask my wife, she'll tell you just how often actually I'm using the laptop on a weekend. And it was just convenient, sitting on the sofa, switched it on, checked something, switched it off, put it down. Be curious to see actually if my electricity bill goes down, because this is not using nearly as much power as my laptop is. But the other thing that people always say to me is you can't do any word processing on it. And that's one of the things I wanted to get onto this week. There is actually a word processing application on here made by Apple called Pages. And it is compatible with Word. You can create PDFs and so on with it. You can import them into here. You can email them and send them. So here's just a quick look. Let me just fire this up and let me show you just how Pages work. And you'll see that it actually is a very, very good word processor. Even the keyboard's not too bad. Just remember, you can get a dock with a keyboard. You can also use Bluetooth keyboards as well. And with that, you can then wirelessly connect to it and type on that as if you were typing on a regular computer. But let's just take a quick look at pages now. So let's just start that up. And I have a whole load of apps here as well. And you can see here that that is on 64%. So I have Pages, it's here on my main screen, it's this icon here, it's made by Apple. It is a word processor and as you can see, I've already got a whole load of documents here already and they all have names down the bottom and as you can see I've created this document entirely on the iPad and there you can see the jargon free logo and also speeding up your broadband and you can see it's all formatted, I've put links in, it's got a header and footer as well. So that's what you can do with it. And what you can see is I can change the name. I can just tap down here. I can backspace if I like and change it. So I could take out the whole lot and type in a new name if I like. So I can email it. I just have to tap here, send via email. And you'll see I can put it into pages, PDF or Word. When I do that, an email pops up. I fill out who I want to send it to and just press send. I can then actually add information just as I would on any email. It's going to cancel that. I could export it. And again, in any of those same three formats, there, so I can then pass it on at a later date. I can also, if you've got Mobile Me, which is the Apple sort of cloud networking, if you like, you can choose share via iWork and it's going to connect up and allow me to just upload it to a website which I can then share or I could keep it to myself. So I'm just going to hit cancel. So that is just a quick look at what it can do. Obviously I can delete files, I can just press the waste paper basket here, I could just delete it, the trash. If I want to create a new one, I can just press here. There's a new document or I can actually duplicate this document and then change that document. 
So I'm just going to click on New Document, well, rather tap on it, and you see it's got a whole bunch of templates here. Now, just a quick look at the templates. I'm just going to choose this one here, and as you can see, it loads. It's all very quick, and it's got a standard setup. If I want to change this picture here, I just tap there. There's a little icon there in the corner. I tap on that. I can choose Photos. So on this occasion, I'm going to choose this one and give it a moment and it will load it in. Nothing is being sped up here and there you can see it's put it in. It's got dots around the corners. I can change the size of it as well. I can change any text here so I can just click here. Keyboard pops up. Because of the way I'm holding it for the camera, I would actually use two hands to do this. But what I can do is I can type in here the new text that I want. And I could do the same here. I could tap up here. I can tap again if I just want to say just change one letter there or just do any editing as I would. So I could change that to Gary's profile. And I could change the heading as well. Oops, change that. You'll see at the top here it says Heading 2. That's showing me the style. If I change it, I can change it to Heading 1, which is a bigger heading. I can change it to Back to Heading 2, or I have other styles as well. They can also be found, so I just need to tap anywhere there. If I go into that little icon at the top there, I can choose Style, and you'll see that the headings, bullet points, captions, headers and footers, all sorts of options are there. I've got Bold. I can bold that if I like. First I need to select it. Let me select it. I can change my selection just by clicking and dragging that across. I could go into here and choose bold, italic, italic or underline. Or I actually could have done it on the toolbar up here. There's bold. So let me just choose that again. Could go bold, we'll turn it off. Italic will take the un that off and the underline as well. You may recognize these as well. These are for centering right aligning and left aligning and so on. So I could easily just change the information in here. So change text. And it does check your spelling as well, just like it does on the iPhone kind of thing. Okay, so that's my document there. It's saving it. It seems to be saving it all the time. If I want to go back, it's definitely saved it now. And just to show you what it would be like to get a blank new document, there's a new document, there's blank, so I can start from scratch. Things that I can do is I can set up a header and footer, that little spanner there, I can just click on that, document setup, and you can see that I can actually tap to edit header and it actually says so there. So I can type in there, jargon free help. Normally I wouldn't do this with just one finger, but it's just because of the way I'm holding it. I can then change Margins, you can see I can change all the margins, all this kind of stuff. Maybe it's actually easier. You have undo. You also have the ability to put in a picture here as well. I'll show you how to do that in a moment. And if I hit done, it's taken me back here. And as you can see, my header is up the top there. So what else can I do? Well, as I said, I can type in here. So I can type latest podcast. And again, I could just choose, I'm going to make that a heading two and you'll see it's done it. I can add in a bullet pointed list if I like. I just click on my eye there. You'll see you've got style, list and layout. I'm just going to choose list. I'm going to choose a bullet point. They can be lettered or numbered as well. So I can put in here, say, what we've been talking about this episode. So Australian Mac user group, AMUG. And you can see it was going to try and correct it there. If I go to the next line down, we've talked about the iPad as well, and again that's going to correct it, and so on. If I press again, it's actually gone. I can do things as simply as you can see here under layout, I've got the alignment, I can do that, how many columns I want, so I can do it in columns. I can, if I tap on this little icon here, I can put in media, which are photos, tables, charts, and shapes. Let's just have a quick look at tables. There we go, I can put in a table, I'm just going to choose a simple one. I can tell it how many columns I want. If I click on this one down here, I can tell it how many rows I want. I can change the size of it. So I come back here. 
just by clicking on those dots, I can make it bigger or smaller. I can just simply enter information into it just like a normal table. So there you go, you can do your tables on that in here too. This is quite a quick little rundown. I'm just going to go to the bottom here. I'm just going to go to the bottom here. And you'll see that I could have put in pictures. So I could just go to my images. You can scan through. Look how easy this is to add images in here. So I choose that one. And you'll see that I can just resize it. Just pop it in there. Do I want another one? Yes, let's go for another one. Let's see, what should I choose this time? Um, let's choose that mug there. No, this is not being sponsored by Starbucks, but I can change the size. I can move it over here. Look how easy this is. This is really easy. And people say, gee, I wonder if this is any good. So there you go. That's very easy to use. By the way, this app is very reasonably priced and you just have to go to iTunes or the App Store on the iPad and you can purchase it there. So I can easily select text, I can email, I can insert, I can do tabs. There's my tab button there that allows me to tab, line break, column break or page break. You can see it's just simple, just easy, easy, easy to use. And I've done those and I could put in a table, I could put in a chart as well. If I go to charts, I can choose a column chart like this, double clicking on it again, and that's where I can actually edit, and that is where I can actually add in the data. So you can see, dead easy. When I'm done, press done, takes me back to here. Here's my graph. I could change all sorts of information here as well. As you can see, very, very simple to use. So if I, again, if I just double tap there, you can see I can put it into series of, as rows or columns. I can change the region here as well. So I could put that as south, I could do that as north, and you'll see where it said region one and region two. It could be anything, it was just that I happened to pick those, but it could be a list of anything that you put there. So very, very, very handy. I can also, if I wanted to, add an arrow at any place. I could just tap there, go to shapes. I've got all sorts of shapes here. You can see they're in different colors as well. So I'm just going to go back. There's even a text box that I could put in. There you go, it's put in a floating text box which I can move around. I could have also put in, I could also put in an arrow as well. Whoops, hit it twice. I had two arrows in there that I didn't want. I just press undo to get rid of one of them. I can move it around like that. Just clicking on either end will allow me to change the size of it. I can move it up here as well. So very easy to use as you can see and really now that is pages so as you can see a very very useful word processor if you felt you needed to do more in word or that it was easy you can set this up type out what you need to put it into word you can email it you can transfer it on the computer via itunes and you can also then make changes to it and actually put it back on here so as you can see a very very good word processor does it replace the laptop or computer again Maybe not, but I tell you what, you can do an awful lot of work on here. Now, I do use this on the train, okay, and it is much faster as well. I can just start it up and go, whereas the laptop, I'd have to wait for it to start as well. The other thing I worry about with the laptop is the hard drive. It does have moving parts. It does have shock resistance. However, this is a flash drive. It's far more robust, and I think on a train with it bouncing around a lot, I think this might actually be a bit better. So there you go, quick look at the iPad again and looking at pages on here.